By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Tippy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday and that means more action for you from the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. The only tournament where we only play with comments from the sets Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends and The Dark. So last week there was this crazy game where I showed you my deck um, and I also played against a very interesting red and black deck. So if you've missed that one, there's probably a card popping up right now. Check out that match. That was a lot of fun. But today we have number two, round number two for you, where we see Martin and John playing against each other. John is playing with a deck called Desert Mechanics. It is pretty sweet. It's red with artifacts. It also has, of course, four deserts in it, hence the name Desert Mechanics. And he's taking on a deck called Blood Thirsty Eggs by Martin. And that means that we're going to see, of course, Rook Egg, but also we're going to see a little bit of blue and some deserts. He also plays with some deserts, so red, blue, and some deserts, so a lot of deserts today. Now, before I jump into the deck deck of both of these decks, I can imagine that maybe you wanna know a little bit more about this tournament, about the rule set, no worries, simply check the description below and there you will find all the information you need and there you will also find several timestamps. So if, for example, you wanna skip the introduction, skip the deck deck, first watch the match, the easiest way to do this is by checking out those timestamps. The timestamp called MTG Games will, uh, will take you straight to the games themselves. Okay, now that all that information is out of the way, we are going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of John Desert Mechanics. And here we see the deck by John Dittert, Desert Mechanics. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's just so cool. This of course is named after the card Desert and the card Orcish Mechanics, which are both in this deck, a full playset of both. Maybe first focus on what these two cards do. So Desert is a land from the Arabian Nights expansion. You can tap it to add one mana, or you can tap it to deal one damage to target attacking creature after it's dealt its damage. So the cool thing is, of course, you're playing Popper, so you probably have a lot of creatures that have a low toughness, so you can use Desert to kill those creatures, but surprisingly enough, most creatures in this card pool have a toughness of two or three or even more than that. So if you want to kill them, you need some help, and I guess that's where the Orcish Mechanics comes in handy, right? So your opponent attacks, you deal one damage with your Desert, maybe you even have two Deserts, and then if you still haven't killed your opponent, you can use your Orcish Mechanics ability, because this creature, it's a 1-1 one, one for three mana, I know, they should have made it like a 1-2, like the Sage, or maybe even a 1-3. I mean, you are paying 3 mana for this bad boy. But anyway, the cool thing of this card is you can tap it, sacrifice an artifact, and deal 2 points of damage to any target. So it's ideal to combine with the Deserts to kind of kill the bigger, beefy creatures of your opponent. And of course, later in the game when your opponent is quite low, Orcish Mechanics can help you to kind of finish off the game. So that is what the deck is named after. But there are some more interesting cards in this deck, and one of them is Dragon Engine. Dragon Engine is three mana, also a common, of course, a 1-3 from the Antiquities expansion. You can pay two to give it plus one, plus O. Oh. Now, trust me, in this format, this is a good card. It's hard to get rid of, and in late game, it gets really, really out of hand because you can pump it for so much mana. So if your opponent has nothing in the way, it can deal a lot of damage, or when, of course, you can make your Dragon Engine unblockable, and that is where this card comes in handy, Taunus is one. So Taunus is one, four mana to cast, two and tap, target creature with power two or less is unblockable this turn. So you can make your creature unblockable, in this case, your Dragon Engine, and then later in the game, um, you can make it, uh, you can pump it up, of course. So you make it unblockable, it attacks, then when it deals damage, you pump it up with uh, by paying two mana to give it plus one, plus oh. So this is a really good combination. This is dangerous. Another really, really good card here is Pyrotechnics. I've seen this card in action already. It is insane. It's so strong in this format. It's one red and four to cast for a sorcery, and Pyrotechnics has four damage divided any way you choose among any number of targets. So, you know, worst case, it's four damage to your opponent, which is already great. But in the best case, you can mow down multiple creatures. Can you imagine first attacking and after combat, so your opponent has declared all sorts of blocks, the damage stays on there until the cleanup step. So you have your second main phase to play your pyrotechnics and kind of start pinging away the creatures. This card is insane. I think we're going to see it. I believe Martin plays with it as well. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, what else do we see? Another card that's kind of interesting to discuss is Primal Clay. I think it's really good because it gives you options. Primal Clay, four to cast, 
You can make a wall, you can make a 3-3 creature or a 2-2 flyer. I guess in most situations, you would choose it to be a 2-2 flyer because there are just not that many flyers in this format. So um, yeah, I think I think we're looking at a beautiful deck and a pretty strong deck. Now let's look at the deck of his opponent. Um, I believe it's called Something with Axe by Martin. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look, let's check it out. And here we see the deck of Martin Bloodthirsty Axe and um, you see a lot of Rook Axe in this format and that makes absolute sense because Rook Axe is a common here and a Chain Lightning is a common, you can play them both, it's an ideal combination, right? Rook Axe, an 03 creature from Arabian Nights and when it dies you get a 4-4 bird token at the end of your turn, if it goes to the graveyard that is. So that means that you can play your Rook Axe and then you play your Chain Lightning on your Rook Axe, killing your own Axe, then you can pay 2 red because that's what you can do with Chain Lightning and you can just pick a new target. Maybe you even have two Rook Eggs on the board. That would mean two 4-4 four, four Flyers at the end of your turn, which is insanely strong. Because remember, we're playing Pauper. So if you've got a 4-4 four, four Flyer, it's insane. Talking about pretty strong common cards, this uh, deck is also playing Azur Drake, which I think is really good. One uh, blue and three for a 2-4 Flyer. That's just reliable. You can also play Ghost Ship here. Again, it's a 2-4, but of course with Ghost Ship, you do need to pay a double blue in the casting cost. So I kind of understand that Martin has chosen to go for Azur Drake here. Um, when you look at the rest of the deck, he went for a lot of Flyers, right? There's Sephir Falcons, there are Flying Mans, and these are great, but there is a but here. They only have one toughness. So it's gonna be tough to fight against the Deserts of John. On the other hand, if he can pump them up with the Unstable Mutations, he's absolutely fine, but it's going to be important to pump it up. Um, we also see in the deck of Martin the Pyrotechnics that we talked about in the other deck deck. Again, Pyrotechnics, super strong. It's gonna be super strong against the deck of John as well. So yeah, this will be an interesting matchup. It kind of looks fair. This looks like fair magic to me. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite is. I don't really have one. I think both decks can kind of get away with it. Both decks can win. For me, it's really a 50-50 here. Anyway, this is the deck of Martin. We've seen the deck of John. That means we're ready. Let's go to round number two of Four Horsemen Popper Tournament right here on Timmy Talks. Game number one, here we go. So on the left, we have Martin with his uh, blue and red bloodthirsty eggs deck. And on the right, we've got John playing with his orcish mechanics deck. And there is a Starbit Martin with a flying man on turn one. John just playing a mountain. I wonder if we're going to see a desert. No desert from John yet. Playing his second red, tapping two red. There is a Felwer Stone in the pass. So the Felwer Stone can make any color of mana that your opponent can. So in this case, okay, I guess red just joined the party as well. There's the first attack with the Flying Man. No unstable mutation, no bloodlust. So just the pass. And also no Zephyr Falcon here from Martin in turn number two. So it's going quite slow. John playing another land, so he's got four mana right now. Could play a Primal Clay, for example. Or, of course, a Clay Statue. And there we see a Yoshin Soldier. So one for a creature that doesn't need to tap when it attacks. It's from the Antiquities expansion. And I believe four cards in hand now in a pass turn. So Martin can still kind of fly over here. No worries, no deserts yet. There's the attack. John dropping to 18. And a mountain by Martin, but still no follow-up play. So this is really good news for John. I expect Martin's deck to be a little bit faster here at this uh, stage in the game. And I wonder if John's going to play out something. Tapping three. Okay, there's an Orcish mechanic, so we can, of course, use the mechanic next turn to, for example, sack the Felwer Stone to kill the Flying Man. I wonder if he does. Maybe he's just going to wait... Tapping four, Azur Drake. No, we're going to see the Rook Axe. So there's that 03 creature. There's the attack. So John here dropping to 18, I believe. Oh, 17, it seems. And uh, so John can now use the Orcish Mechanics if he wants to, but I guess he's just going to wait with it. That's what I expect him to do, playing land drop uh, number four. So five mana in total now for John. He could play his uh, Pyrotechnics now for one damage on the Flying Mana, three damage on uh, on Martin. And for now, you know, the Rook Egg is a pretty good blocker. I mean, John could consider attacking with both. That's exactly what he does. So Martin probably going to just uh, block one of the two creatures, taking one damage from the other. So he'll drop to 18. 
And that's exactly what happens. Are we going to see a play from John in his second main? That tapping four here. Okay, we're going to see something. There is a primal clay. Sorry, uh, a clay statue, of course. So clay statue, a 3-1. You can pay two to regenerate it, also from the Antiquities expansion. And are we going to see a Pyrotechnics here? There is a Pyrotechnics. So this is what I talked about. This card is so good. He can now destroy the mechanics and the statue and deal two damage to John as well. And there's another attack. So he's going to drop to 14 in total. And here you can see that value of Pyrotechnics. One Pyrotechnics wipes out two creatures and deals two points of damage to John. That's just insane value. Tapping a red here, playing an Immolation on the Flying Man, so killing the Flying Man. Immolation, a card from Legends, giving a plus two, minus two, an enchant creature. There is another Felwer Stone in past turn. So John finding a little bit too many of these stones. He'd rather have other cards. There is a tap for four. Are we going to see an Azur Drake? We're going to see a, yeah, we're going to see an Azur Drake here. An attack here with the Rook Act, I guess. John is not going to tap. We're going to see a Bloodlust. Exactly. There's a Bloodlust. So that means four points of damage for John. He's going to drop to 10. And John, John just really needs something here. Another land for him. There's an Orcish Mechanics. Okay, that's, well, not really what he wants, though. There's an attack. He's going to take the damage. I think this is a good decision from Martin. Why take uh, the risk, you know? He can now attack with the Azure Drake, dealing two more points of damage, and John's going to drop to eight, probably. That's exactly what happens here. Second main for Martin. Tapping a red, or are we going to see a Chain Lightning? The thing is, ooh, there we're going to see a Chain Lightning. I wonder if he's going to chain his own Rook Egg here. It looks like he's actually going to chain the Orcish Mechanics, and he's going to send it back. This is interesting because, of course, Martin also could have chosen to chain lightning his own Rook Egg. And he's going to send it back. Interesting moment in the game here. I'm trying to follow up what happens. Oh, and then Martin sends it back as well. He still has two red open. And then John sends it back. So it looks like Martin's going to drop you to 11. And John's dropped to 5. Quite interesting. I mean, an option for Martin would have been to play it on his own egg and then to send it over to John. And here we see John playing another clay statue. And Martin going for the untap here. It's looking really good for Martin, by the way. He's so close to victory. Attacking here, putting John on three. That means John has two more turns to go. Well, actually, with the Flying Man, he only has one more turn to go. So he has to get rid of these Flyers or get a really good blocker up. This is going to be really tough for John. You don't want to be on three against a deck with Chain Lightnings. And nope, that's it. Okay, so Martin here winning the first one. One game up, and we didn't see a single desert from John. I think a desert would have done a lot of good, especially at the start of the game, and Martin just kept flying in with that flying man. So that, that didn't work for John, unfortunately, but both players now going to their sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go with John on the play, starting with a mountain and a pass turn. Let's see what Martin can do. And there's again a flying man. Turn one. This is what he wants to do. He did it in game one. He's now doing it in game number two as well. Ooh, but there's a desert by John. And because of that desert, it's going to be tough for Martin to attack. If he does, he's going to lose that flying man. Unless, of course, he's got, for example, an unstable mutation. Looks like he's just passing turn. And this desert is super annoying for Martin because he's playing with Zephyr Falcon and flying man. Full play sets of both. John here playing a mountain. Ooh, he's tapping the desert, leaving an opening for Martin here. And there we see a dragon engine. So dragon engine, a 1-3 creature from antiquities. You can pay 2 to give it a plus 1, plus 0. Oh. And there we see an island being played. There's the unstable. So that means Martin can deal some damage here. Attacking for 4. John dropping to 16. 
This is good news for Martin. Next turn he can swing in as well, putting him on 13 perhaps. Let's see what John's going to do here. Playing another desert. This is actually quite good news for John. It means he only has to take one more hit. And after that, the uh, Flying Man becomes a 2-2 and he can kill it with the deserts. But first he's going to attack. He could pump it to a 3-3. Three, three. But it looks like he's just going to pump it once though. Going to pump it to a 2-3. So deal 2 points of damage. So I wonder what he's going to do in his second main. Because I'm sure he left those mana open for a reason. Tapping one red. There's a chain lightning. Is that going to be to the face? Maybe he's making a mistake. Maybe he's thinking the flying man is a 3-3. But that's not the case. It looks like he made a mistake. So he's taking it back. Usually these players are pretty relaxed. But it does mean, of course, that John... Uh, dealt one damage less and he has shown the chain lightning so martin has some information flying man is now a 3-3 i guess if i was john i wouldn't even use my chain lightning on it because he can use the deserts next turn martin tapping three here what's he gonna do there's a jaloom tome this is actually a really good card two and tap draw a card and immediately discard a card this is really handy because sometimes in these games you get land flooded or you find the wrong pieces and this can kind of help you go through your deck but first the attack, of course, by Martin. So John's going to drop to 13 here, taking three points of damage. Now remember, the Flying Man is getting smaller every single turn because of that unstable mutation. So John untapping here, taking his turn. There's a Chain Lightning now. So now he's going to kill it. Interesting choice, though, because, you know, he's got the Deserts. He's going to pump it, dealing two more points of damage. He's going to put Martin on 16, I believe. Then he's gonna pass turn. So I, th I think if you're Martin, you're kind of okay with the creature taking the Chain Lightning. He's gonna draw a card with Jaloom and discard a card. Let's see what card he's going to discard. There's an island. So this is usually what people use the Jaloom for in these matchups, kind of to dump the uh, excessive lands. Tapping a blue. Okay, there's a Flying Man again. Now again, those Flying Man are not very useful at this moment in the game because of the deserts on the side of John. And here you can really see the usefulness of these deserts. Sometimes they're overlooked, but they're gaining popularity. There is an immolation. So he's playing the immolation on the flying man, using it as removal. Remember, it gives plus two, minus two. And again, he's pumping the drake, dealing three more points of damage. And this is really a nice strategy by John, just trying to keep the road clear and, and keep attacking with his, uh, with his drake. Sorry, with his dragon engine. And I think, of course, if you're John, you just like to have a little bit more mana so you can pump it into the Dragon Engine. I mean, John does have five cards in hand. And here we see Martin again using the Jalum Tome, trying to find some answers. There's an island, so it's really land flooded. Ooh, finding an eel. This is really cool. A card from the dark. I believe it's a 1-1. One, one, and for two red, he can give it plus two, plus O. Oh. And then he does get a shock because it's an electric eel. Really cool card. Beautiful art by Anson Maddox. So it looks like Martin here is on 13 now because of that eel. Let's see what John can do. So John has the Dragon Engine. He can attack. But if he does, Martin can block and pump it and kill it. So I guess if you're John, you don't want that to happen. Ooh, playing an Immolation. These Immolations are just great removal pieces for John here. Attacking again, he can pump it to two. Looks like he's not gonna. So just dealing one point. Are we going to see a mechanics? No, another dragon engine. Ooh, I think we're going to have a third game on our hands here, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, Martin's not dead yet, but it's looking really, really good for John. He's going to use it again. First order of business is to take care of those engines. There's an Azur Drake. So Azur Drake is not ideal in this situation because it's a 2-4. And remember, the Dragon Engines have three toughness. Discarding an Immolation. So actually, Immolation would be quite interesting here. You could put an Immolation on one of the engines and then trade it for the Azur Drake. It's not ideal. Ooh, yep. This is going to kill the Flyer. A card from the sideboard. And now attacking with two Dragon Engines. Two more points of damage for Martin. Going to 10. 
There's a mechanics. Doesn't have a big impact on the board yet. So Martin on 10 here. Tapping two blue. There's a Sefer Falcon. It's not really going to help him. Perhaps there's a scenario where he can block and put a Bloodlust on the Falcon. Or perhaps on the, on the Dragon Engine when blocking and then trading a Falcon for a Dragon Engine. There's an attack with both. It looks like he's going to let them go. The question is, is John going to pump in with how much? He's just going to pump for one. It means three points of damage for Martin's going to drop two. It seems seven. I want to say eight, but it's seven. What is John going to do with this mana? Nothing, it seems. Interesting. Again here, Martin drawing a card with the Tome, really trying to find answers. Can't really see what he is discarding there. Oh, I think it's an Artifact Blast. That Artifact Blast would have been great to stop, to counter one of those Dragon Engines. There's an Unstable Mutation. Now, this is getting interesting. Remember, Zephyr Falcon, you don't have to tap it when you attack, so it's an ideal creature in this scenario. He's attacking here. John dropping to 8. And he also has a blocker next turn. Actually dropping to 9 here. I guess he was still on 13 then instead of 12. There is a Rook Egg. Another really good card for Martin. It's a great blocker. And of course John doesn't want to kill it. Or else Martin gets a 4-4 flyer. Oh, this is interesting. Dragon Engine to the face. This is bad news for Martin. Does John have a Pyrotechnics in hand here? He can play the Pyro, deal 4 points of damage. Okay, there's the mechanics. Yep, there it is. This is game. Great to see John killing Martin here with the mechanics in combination with the direct damage. Beautifully done, John. And that means it's 1-1 one, one here and we're going to go to game number 3. Game number 3, here we go. And there's to start with an island by Martin. There's the Electric Eel. So Electric Eel gives you a little shock when it comes into play. So one damage, two red. You can pump it, plus two, plus oh, make it a three one. Again, it deals one damage to you. And there we see that Desert by John. I mean, this is great for John. You're playing for Deserts, you're finding them and they're useful, but there's an Unstable though. So again, four points of damage. Martin actually doing quite a lot of work with that Unstable Mutation. And remember, Unstable Mutation gives plus three, plus three, but during your upkeep, you put a minus one, minus one counter on the creature. John finding a Mountaineer Felwer Stone, so ramping up a little bit. It does mean that John's going to take three more points of damage next turn. So he'll drop to 13. There's that minus one, minus one counter. If Martin can find a second red, oh, he can deal five damage. Yeah, of course you can. Martin's living the Electric Eel dream here. This is what you want to do. Bad news for John, dropping to 11. And of course, Martin is getting a little shock from that pump, but this is, this is great. This is juggernaut damage done by an electric eel. That's fantastic for Martin. Actually, quite nice to see, in my humble opinion here. John here playing another mana. I mean, he needs to cast something, has to stop the electric eel. Okay, this will do it. A bit of a flavor fill, killing an electric eel with lightning, but it is happening right here on Timmy Talks and John playing another Felwer Stone and a pass turn. Martin playing land number four. There it is, the Rook Egg again. So if Martin has a Chain Lightning in hand, he can deal some pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good business. He can kill his own Rook Egg, then pay two red and deal three damage to John as well. Let's first see what John can do. We're tapping four also. Choosing to tap the Desert. And, ooh, a Mountain Yeti coming in from the sideboard. Protection from white, but more importantly, it's got Mountain Walk. So it can just walk all over Martin, dealing three points of damage per attack. This is bad news for Martin, but if Martin has to chain lightning, he can chain the Rook. Nope, he's got another Rook Egg, though. And a pass turn, so this is a little bit difficult for Martin. Again, if he can find a Chain Lightning, he's back on top again. But for now, John is running the show. Of course, Martin's still on a high life total. There's the first attack by the Mountain Yeti. So Martin's going to drop to 15 here. That Mountain Walk is just absolutely fantastic. There we see a tap of four. Another Mountain Yeti. Oh, 
<laughs> that means six points of damage. This is so bad for Martin. Needs to find a chain lightning or some other type of removal. Not a rook egg. That is so unfortunate. You can see John kind of smile thinking, man, that is so unfortunate for Martin. But I'm actually kind of happy with the situation. There's the pass again. That means six points of damage for Martin. That means he'll drop to nine. And maybe John can find an immolation or another pump spell. First an attack for six. Martin's going to drop to nine. There's really nothing Martin can do here. He just has to hope that he finds some of his removal. I mean, he's got the cards for it. He just needs to find them. He is playing with red, of course, with direct damage options. A Fisher could be an option. A Pyrotechnics. Chain Lightning would be ideal, but he's not finding it, though. Has to pass turn. Six points of damage flying in here. Is Martin going to lose this one after winning that first game? And also this game, it kind of felt like he was close after that Juggernaut Electric Eel attack. There's a Pyrotechnics. Is this end of the road? It is end of the road. Look at Martin only finding Lance John. Congratulations on this victory. 1-2 for John Dittert and his Desert Mechanics. Oh, 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 what a game it was. Thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in the background, you can see the beautiful deck photo of John's deck, Desert Mechanics. I gotta say, it's just great to see Desert actually play a vital role in a tournament. I think it's really cool. In general, I love seeing these cards play a role, like Dragon Engine doing his thing, the Electric Eel Juggernaut move in Game 3 by Martin. That was excellent. I really enjoyed watching this. Actually, a big thank you to both players, Martin and uh, John, for showing their skills here on the channel. So this was a second round match in the group stages of the tournament. And if you enjoyed this, wait until you see next week's match, because that's going to be uh, between Marco with his deck fully altered, and he's playing against Alex's deck, which is called Burning Jungle. Junkyard, and I mean this is gonna be a great match and this is actually a match played in the top 16 Yes, next week we are starting with the top 16 so you do not want to miss this Anyway, before you go, please, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things to support the channel. First thing is a like, share, and comment. Actually, those are three things. All these things are free and they really help the channel move forward. And if you're new to Timmy Talks, welcome to the channel. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. Okay, now you've done all that, you've got my gratitude, but there's one last thing that I would like you to consider and that is becoming a patron. You can become a patron on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. There's probably an info card popping up right now. And the cool thing is, if you become a patron, you're supporting the channel financially and you're really helping me keep the channel afloat. It already starts with $1 a month. And for that support, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can also have access to these Timmy Talks tournaments. You can join in them if you want to. We can even make an episode together at a certain tier level. And of course, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? <laughs> this end scroll. Somebody can see.